Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Australian Vintage Computer Collectors Zoom catch up for May 2022. Before I begin, I'd like to point out that this is being recorded so others can view later. I'd like to welcome David, who's our newcomer, to this chat and ask him to introduce himself before we catch up and see what we've been doing for the last month. So, welcome, David. Um, tell us how you uh, got into this hobby and uh, and what you collect. Okay, I'm, I'm David. I, I live in Perth, Western Australia. Um, I've uh, my my dad was a, a computer engineer and um, he was in the Australian Navy. Uh, basically, worked on a lot of the early early computer systems. Then, when he left the Australian Navy, he became a a, a service technician and a, and a manager for digital equipment and. Um, uh, Raytheon and a whole lot of other computer places all over the world. So uh, I was exposed basically since I've been born, my house has always had computers in it. Um, and uh, um, through the, uh, for the seventies and eighties, we had the apples my dad sold apples. We had compu colors. Um, we sold compu colors, um, uh, all sorts of stuff. So I've uh, I had a lot of, a bit of stuff from him and just, uh, I've, 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 pick bits and pieces up over the years and I'm trying to start a computer museum in Western Australia. Oh, awesome. Awesome. So uh, what have you actually got a large collection now? Yeah, it's huge. Um, I've got a, I've got a, uh, a 1993 Cray mainframe. Oh, wow. Um, uh, the, the university of Western Australia threw it out at the freaking verge. It's a WA's first real supercomputer, literally going to be chucked out. Wow. Um, and it's up in my place in 2J, in air conditioning, just in stasis. Um, got um, uh, I've, I've got a, a, a number of other digital mainframes. I've um, got some some, some um, old control data stuff. Um, I, I haven't got a compu color. I want one of those. But I've got lot, almost every Apple you've ever heard of. Um, um, you know, the first, the first Lisa ones, the initial ones with the ceramic chips, um, uh, a whole lot of stuff that, uh, you know, I mean, you know, micro bees, Amstrads, you know, um, have you ever got a computer called a Corona? <laughs> it's funny when, when I ordered the Corona, it took three and a half months to come and then the Corona epidemic came and I think I bought it on everyone. <laughs> <laughs> well, so it sounds like you've got a pretty darn good collection. I mean, uh, anyone who's got a Lisa one clearly takes their collecting very seriously. So, wow, kudos to that. And a Cray, uh, you yeah, must have a pretty large facility. Yeah, I've got two two spots. I'm, I'm trying to sort of do them up and probably eventually get them virtually initial and then sort of yeah, just get interested groups through. You know, it's um, uh, yeah, basically two. I mean, I, I would say we've probably got about probably about three hundred square of ground um in between two buildings um and uh is I, i'm not i'm trying not to get anything else really because it's just overflowing and uh a lot of you know vintage spare parts and um you know manuals of all sorts um you know and uh yeah no it's uh i, I think I, I went a bit uh, addictive for a while but you know i'm, I'm i've sort of uh, got older and more sensible now <laughs> and David, how how far from Perth is is all that? Uh, it's it, it's pretty well central. In, all the, the collection is central, but some of the other stuff is outside Perth because mm. obviously the storage. Um, yeah. And obviously, you know, the cray weighs a bloody lot of stuff. And until I, I've got a final place I want to put it, it's easier just leaving it out of the way in an air conditioned air type thing. You know, for sure. Wow. So you did you say that you welcome small groups? No, I eventually want to do that. So I'm oh, just okay. starting. I'm just starting. I, I to... think that a few of us will go over for a weekend trip if you can. <laughs> to... <laughs> Bloody oath. Yeah, we'll, we'll yeah. have a. That'd be a great weekend trip, wouldn't it? Just fly over Saturday night, <laughs> stay over for a couple of nights, have a few drinks. Nice yeah, I severely need to do some some severely uh, cleaning and organising. But I mean, I'm getting there. I mean, I've yeah, you know, I've got some things up. I've got some some pictures up and. Um, you know, we've got a bit of, you know, sort of video games, memorabilia. We've got a, you know, a, a life-size claptrap from Borderlands and we've got a, you know, a whole lot of old consoles as well. So, you know, yeah, it's pretty, you know, good hobby, interesting stuff. Um, yeah. my, my dad, I mean, anything digital, my dad knows, or any, any computers I can pull out of it. Just, you know, my dad's, he's my dad's 80. I just, 
Uh, you know, I hope he doesn't kick the bucket because that's my main encyclopedia gone. <laughs> <laughs> David, are you looking at a setup where people can just sort of look and read about the history or more sit down and hands on and play with the stuff or? I, I don't know yet. I mean, the, the thing is, I think I just went hell for leather getting the stuff. And then I thought to myself, without any real serious, you know, thinking of, so I'm getting to the stage where probably eventually just a, a, a reading, a reading thing initially, but I've also, part of the area I want to do it so that people can have a look at some of the different, you know, f- through the different eras of, of gaming and different you know, eras of uh, various aspects of computing with some hands-on stuff. Even if I just do that se- section with an emulator that allows them to at least see the stuff. I mean, I don't necessarily want them to wreck everything, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, if you picture that the right groups, you're probably not going to get anyone that wrecks anything. No, no we had one at Smythesdale up here and yeah, uh, they had a lot of the school groups and that go through it. And, you know, he had some stuff that was look and don't touch, but other stuff was, you know, CRTV yeah. TV set up with consoles and bits and pieces. And uh, yeah, that was, that was a great, uh, a great place to go to. Um, and a very interesting bloke as well. Once you got to mm. talk to him. Did yeah. you actually go see him, David? Yes, I did. Was that before or after the closure? Uh, that was actually probably about eight or nine years beforehand. Uh, I would go to uh, completely off topic, but I'd go to an astronomy uh, weekend twice a year up at Snake Valley, which is just around the corner, basically. Uh, and one of the things they had on there, you could do walks and stuff during the day. And uh, Vintage Computer Museum, it's like, right, that floats my boat. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, this is pretty exciting, David. I've got to say, uh... I've never been to Western Australia, and I reckon if you said open to us, I think we could get a posse over. I reckon that would be wonderful. Well, that would be a great voice. Well, actually, I'll, I'll probably, yeah, I'll try, I'll try and sort of maybe go, you know, uh, I've just got to do a little bit of organising. The problem is you, you just put boxes somewhere and you think, fuck, I've got to... <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm getting them out on the shelves and stuff, and you know, stuff are the things that you sort of take for granted. You say, "Oh, Jesus, that's my old North Star Horizon. That's been in a box for what, like uh, thirty years." <laughs> so, <laughs> and I've got the advantage and all sorts of stuff. It's really, um, you know, there's the, and I just I think the thing is, I've got to the stage where I've I've been more or less forced to move it out of house, and and, and I've found these places, and I'm you know. I, I wouldn't mind getting a f- you know, few people interested in, and maybe, yeah, obviously it helps if you've got information because it saves me doing all the stuff too. So, I mean, I, I, well, you guys, you're big, you do, but you know, obviously you, but you have your own collections and stuff. So any of you guys do any museum stuff or? Uh, not I, so, you go, David. I was going to say not so much, but um there's one guy who's not here today who um, organises like once every couple of months we go to one of the local swap meets and we get our gear out there and um, uh, so we can, you know, take a few things along so the uh, great unwashed masses can get their hands on it. So yeah. I, I think a lot of us actually came in with the idea that maybe we would start a museum like yourself. And that was my original idea and I collected so much stuff. And in the last 10 years, I've just been getting rid of it because I realized that the dream that I originally had, I was never going to deliver on. So I might as well put this stuff in the hands of people who would, and I'm still sort of in that process, Mm -hmm. but there are some people who have done it right. Um, So the ACMS, which is a Sydney based organization, uh, the Australian computer museum computer society, museum society. Yeah, yeah. uh so they do that and they've got a, a place where actually now that alan's popped in alan was there and did a demonstration there a month ago i think it was maybe just over a month and uh they've got a facility and also come on anthony also uh adrian who also sometimes pops into this he has his own personal apple museum that he's currently trying yes. to get going and that'll be somewhere in North Sydney. He also has uh, Lisa Ones and a lot of uh, amazing, uh, yeah, an amazing collection uh, that most people would be very envious of. He's got them all in boxes and everything. It's, uh, yeah, yeah he spent right. a lot of money on that. So there's a, a couple of people who actually have paths to uh, or are nearly there. And then there's people like me who just... I'm pretty good at making a bookshelf. 
I was gonna I was gonna pretty well give up, but I mean, then I've, I've my um, my oldest son decided to do IT, and he's fascinated in it. Hmm. And um, I thought to myself, that's good. And then my my second son is is doing computer computer animation stuff. So um, it's actually good because then by definition they're both interested in where it all came from. So. Um, I, I, I was always getting to the point where I was just, oh, shit, I, I'll try to get it to somebody that's going to do it. and But then I've got uh, two two guys all of a sudden that are very keen on it. That's great. That's really great. Um, the only sad thing for us is uh, I'm from Victoria. David's from Victoria. Pat's from Victoria. Greg's I'm from good. Victoria. Alan's from Victoria. Steve, are you in Victoria? And I'm pretty sure Nigel's up in Queensland. Yeah, yeah no, I, I used to live in Victoria years ago. That's that's where we um that's where my dad's was computers company was based. So um um we we yeah we used to um I mean uh, yeah we th- there was a lot of computer gear in uh, Victoria. I mean that's um I'm just trying to think. I, I would say a lot of my stuff would have come from there. Um yeah, you had a lot of really strange things. Um like you know Morrow computers. Have you heard of those? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've not seen them any worse in Australia. Uh, the actually, the guy that was a dealer for Borrow over there, I think he now does. Um, he does. Uh, sk- yeah, he's up at uh, near Falls Creek, and he does the um, uh, snow transfers. He worked as a snow transfer business. He drives people up and down to the snow. Hmm. And if you, I like trying to get when you go up there, you sort of talk with him, and he he knows about all the old stuff about Moro computers and it's quite good it's been quite a good source of information yeah cool all right well we'll continue on but thank you for telling us your story david that's pretty exciting and if you make any progress towards that uh even if you'd say you know what i'd like a couple of people to come over and have a look at my collection i'm pretty sure we'd still be interested irrespective of how neat and tidy it is because you don't want to see my shed it's not exactly neat and tidy. or mine <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm just going to talk about what i've been doing for the last month and then i'll hand around <clears throat> so so for those who uh we already had this on the pre-chat so i apologize for people who are already there so i uh am aiming to get the original 125 titles for the intellivision you can see them behind me so the key is we need them complete in box as they were I am five titles short, so I've made a huge gain in the last couple of weeks. And that's because I bought an enormous bundle of Intellivision stuff. I got a couple of things, but I've been clearing them out and using them to fund the more expensive titles that I've been importing from overseas. So if you think that I'm making squillions, no, I'm reinvesting and paying a lot for very boring titles. But uh, it's all about completeness. So I've done that. Um, I bought... So I don't know if you recall a couple of months ago, David Stevenson was on here and he was talking about collaborating with the future was 8-bit and uh, writing some software with them. Well, I got that. So this is Tut Tut uh, from the Futures, uh, uh, future was 8-bit. So it's a pet version of the game, uh, fresh tapes. And he's even uh, credited inside the cover here, which is cool. So David's uh, here in Australia, which is nice. I also got another title, Cheese and Chive, another pet game. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and the other than that is I've been building in my spare time a Minstrel 2, which is the ZX80 uh, from the Future Was 8-Bit. He was clearing them out, and uh, I thought it would be a lot of fun because building those kit computers always is. Um, and the only other thing, and uh, someone alluded to this before, I, um, I was looking through youtube i think and i saw a video of this guy and he fired up an emulator on youtube and he started playing super mario brothers on a mattel and television and the graphics were amazing and i thought what's happening is this real what would this look like on real hardware and i posted an atari age and some some person just reached out to me and said here's the rom file and then I put it on my flash cart and uh, unbelievable. Um, so I might put in the comments, the YouTube link, if you want to have a look, but I tell you what, if this console from 1978 could do, I look at some of the sprites were probably better on the Nintendo, but 
it's as good as the Nintendo version. The sound is exactly the same. It's something to be seen. So if you haven't seen it, you should. Actually, those who look at the videos, it's actually on my feed. So if you look at the feed where the, <clears throat> the Zoom videos are stored on YouTube, uh, you can find it there. Um, you can also enjoy my my pajamas that I was wearing during the recording of said video. <laughs> Other than that, I got to say the whole month has flown. Flown. I know uh, someone mentioned that in the pre-chat, but uh, yeah, um, I don't know where the last month has gone. Is that, that an A500 Mini behind you? It is. <laughs> it, it is an A500 Mini, and it's uh, exactly where I left it last month. So uh, <laughs> you haven't so unboxed it yet. So last month in the Zoom chat, it was in the box. It's still in the box, uh, looking wonderful. Or what a what a cool little thing that is. <laughs> Um, but uh, it's looking great in the box and yeah. good for gathering dust. It's a dust collector. That's <laughs> um, yeah. Other than that, yeah, not a lot going on. Um, I never ended up finishing that cluster networking stuff I was doing with the JX. As soon as I got overwhelmed with the enormous bundle of Intellivision titles and hardware, I basically put everything on hold and I've been trying to sort that out and I'm practically done there. But for those who don't know, I, received this a couple of months ago the ibm cluster software and i uh, connected a jx a 5150 and a pc junior on the original cluster network software was terrible uh, but i never finally i wanted to start moving files around and just see how ineffective it was um because it's been reportedly to be terrible my experience so far has been it's actually not that bad but i would love to finish that project off and I'm now going to hand over to David because I'm sure you have something exciting to say. David Burton. Yeah. Um, yeah, I've caught the Intellivision bug as well. <laughs> I hope that didn't come out your nose, mate. Yeah, we did. <laughs> <laughs> Don't. Do not do the 125, please. If you want to just grab money and just throw it in that, way, that bin, by all means. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So so actually given that you're both doing in television collecting and Anthony, you're at the hard part of the collection. One tip that I did kind of work out towards the end of my collecting was that um um some of the titles like Tutankhamen, Carmen, um, you can sometimes source those a little bit less than what you could out of the US looking around some of the European markets. I think the Netherlands from memory um might have had some really um I'm not saying that they're like half price or anything, but they're, you, you'll see them come up and they'll, they're either, they either sometimes don't come up in the US or they'll come up cheaper than, than what the, the so I, that, that would be my tip there for like things like Turbo and Turn Carmen. I just want a box for Turbo. I just want a box. <laughs> cart, cart's right here. I'm wondering whether I might have even had a, yeah, see, I had a loose cart and then I eventually got a box Turbo, but I, and sorry to interrupt, David, but, no, you're um, right, mate. but, um, I'm trying to think if I might have even bought a repro box at some point. A turbo? I don't, it, yeah, I don't know. I I know I bought a repro of something that I didn't end up using. But anyway, I'll I'll, I'll shut up now. But um, yeah. <laughs> what have you got okay. there? Show us. Show us. Show us what you got. You know, golf, drafts, That's right. baseball. Yeah. Show us the bottom. Show us the bottom of the boxes. Oh, they will be sought after. So those white stickers means they were distributed by Lifestyle Electronics. So what you need to do is when you list them on eBay, make sure you put Australian Lifestyle Electronics and people will, the collectors are interested in that variant. Uh, they're the only ones I have. So th th they're just, yeah. Yeah, so if you're going to sell them, you need to point out that they're the Australian Lifestyle variant. Mm, there you go there's a top tip for you anyway david tell us about your new fangled in television love <laughs> well it was actually the the, uh, the intellivision was the first uh aside from the game and watches that uh my uncle used to bring back from japan back in the day it was the intellivision was the first uh either console or computer I ever got my hands on so it was a rather lovely stroll down amnesia lane and uh uh, my brother didn't know about any, about it and he came over a couple of days ago and I said, oh, do you remember these? He's going, oh, yeah, and I whacked Burger Time in and all of a sudden there's an hour and a half gone. We're both playing Burger Time against each other like we did back in the day. So that's been really good. Um, so very happy with uh, with that. Um, did you I saw the photo did you... of all your kid? It was a fair setup. Did you get a good deal? 
I think I got a pretty decent deal. Oh. I think I think I was uh, pretty fair. Yeah, 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 good, good. Yeah, 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 everything everything working. So it's all good. Hmm. Um, good seller must be a good seller. Yeah, yeah, must have been a good bloke. Must have been a good bloke. <laughs> Um, uh, the rest of it, I, yeah, my A five hundred Mini is still in its box as well. Um, <laughs> it's not doing anything, uh, but I did see an interesting um, video on YouTube, which sort of lit a fire under me. Which was um, uh, an ex Microsoft guy over in the US. So what's his name? Dave Plummer or something like that. He found a, a Moss Kim one with a whole stack of expansion boards. So it's like memory expansions, serial cards. Uh, it was like about an eight, eight card stack. Uh, and he got the source code for basic 1.0, converted it into paper tape, but a digital version of paper tape, loaded it onto the Kim, obviously after compiling it. And he was uh, running through a was it a, something like a, a VT2200 or something, which he hooked up to it, uh, basic on a Kim 1. I thought, oh, I'll just dust off my Kim 1 and try and get that bloody thing working. And I found today it's got crook RAM on it. So now I've got to find uh, 2102 static RAMs. So that's going to be fun. Mm. But uh, aside from that, uh, I was uh, playing around with uh, a few uh, Mac Pluses. So... Uh, uh just just for the hell of it it's like got too many of these tidy a few up get ready to move them on so but uh no the intellivision that's been the that's been the the pick of the month thus far so cool great Stephen, what have you been doing uh well yeah it wouldn't be an update from me without having acquired some crazy commodore stuff um this I don't know how um, particularly rare these are, but it's a different thing for me to have. Uh, <laughs> Commodore 386 laptop. Oh, yes. Yeah, I've that, seen... That, was, mine, was, a th was mine a 386? I think it was. Yours had a Crook battery in it? or had was a Crook a... battery. Yeah. I think I sold it to Western Australia. I think it went to Western Australia. Yeah. Uh, so, does it work? I haven't, I haven't got the power supply for it, so I just oh. got that unit. It's not in great condition, but it's. Um, I'll give it a go eventually. I just thought it'd be something interesting to have, something different. Mine had a weird texture issue going on with the surface. It's like it had some rubberized stuff on it. Yeah, it's got like um, yeah marks yeah. on it. It's marked. Yeah, I think it's, it's like a rubberized. Yeah, hmm. mine mine was a dead hard disk, and you couldn't put in an SD hard disk in it. And uh, I was struggling, so I just sold it as is because um, I wasn't really excited by it. But it's a cool, cool Commodore mm. item. Yeah, something interesting. It's 16 volts. So I can't imagine it's going to be easy to get a uh, power supply for it, but I'll we'll worry about that at a later stage. I've got other projects I've got to get through, like desoldering that keyboard connector. <laughs> month, month four of that. <laughs> I haven't tried it since last time we spoke, though. So but the other interesting thing I got was this. Have a look at this. Now, tell me if you've seen or if you and any of you guys have one of these because I can't find much information about them. This is the Commodore 1803 monitor. It's like a, looks like a converted TV. I've never um, seen that before. Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, it just seems to be a rare one. And it's got, it's a European kind of thing. So it's only got SCART and nothing else on the back, just SCART. Not even a power cable. <laughs> I just have a power cable that comes with the side. Yeah. Oh, there it is on the side. Yeah, so I saw that and I thought, that's interesting. And uh, I knew it was kind of special because um, Bo Zimmerman doesn't appear to have one. So you didn't, you didn't buy this from John Pappas, did you? No, I got this from Europe. Okay. Oh, thank God. Yeah, yeah you, you worried me there for a second. Pat, I thought, oh no, you haven't bought that from some guy in Melbourne, have you? I was going to say, it looked very, very shiny. No, it's the it's the real deal. It's not a uh, not a made up one. Yeah, it's um, the shape. I think of... There's reference to it online, but it does say that it's um it says well the exact words it says extremely rare. The 1802 back look looks like that, but the 1802 has that weird handle on the top. Does that have a weird handle on the top? No, it, it huh. looks like they literally took a TV and made a Commodore monitor out of it. You can even see the antenna hole on the top where you would yeah. put the bunny ears. Yes, that's right. It does have one of those. <laughs> interesting 
Do I have that? Yeah. Does it have a year on the back? Because it looks like if it's 1994, it could be fake Commodore. It says 1984 on the back. <laughs> yeah. 1984. It does say 84. I don't know if that's a year or some other model number. That looks like the late Commodore, like they would have put on an Amiga in the early 90s. I'm just, mm. just, I found a reference to it on the internet where there's a whole heap of Commodore monitors, uh, analog RGB and SCART composite. Uh, Samsung internals, PAL, um, yeah, 320 by 512 interlaced, um, television case with a question mark, late, late Amiga 500 slash Amiga 500 plus. There you go. I thought it was the late Amiga logo because the 500 plus and the 1200 and the 600 have that sort of scripting of Commodore, so... Interesting. That's cool. That is a great. That's... Would you get that on eBay or something? Yeah, eBay. It was um, somewhere, someone in Europe somewhere. Oh, very and, cool. And I'm just the this same website has actually got pictures of the um, of oh, the, the manual of the manual. Oh yeah, that's the 1200 sort of 600 series. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've got an so eighty node too, but yeah. Yeah. So. But yeah, it's um, yeah, nice. That's cool. Mm. That's really cool. Is that color white or is that actually beige? It's, I don't know if it's gone a little bit yellow, but it's, it's pretty white. Yeah. It's, so it's, it's the A, it's, so it's the A600, A1200 sort of color? Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Well, cool. looking at, looking at the instruction book, it's got the same logo as the sort of the Workbench 3 type manual. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so that I don't would know make why sense. It's 1984 in the back. There must be a model number or something related. It's in German, though. Yeah, they, they have a uh, metric time over there, so maybe. <laughs> Could be anything. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, I guess that's really it. From me. I don't, um, don't have anything else to report, unfortunately. Um, just those couple of acquisitions and um, just keep my eye out for other stuff. I did see a, um, an Apple One has come up, not on eBay. There's one guy who's asking... Two million Aussie. It's been up there for a while. I don't know if it's sold or not. Pretty good price. Pretty good yeah, price. but there's um, one has come up at um, some other auction place. I have a Google um, a search alert set for um, for certain terms, and so if things Google finds things, it, I can get an email. So you can do that if you if you weren't aware. And um, that's how I got onto this. Um, there's an Apple One. The current bid I think is two two hundred and thirty thousand US. Which it's is, still too much money. It's much less than I think the last one, which was um, the last one I saw was, was about over nine hundred thousand. It's practically but, a bargain. <laughs> yeah, so I fully expected to get up to there, but we'll see. I can send, I can put the link in the chat if you like. <laughs> yeah, that'd be interesting. Uh, in, case anyone's, <laughs> in case anyone's interested in having a bit. Patty's. So, uh, Patty's. He's I gonna was gonna say, his, is that a group buy? Is it? Yeah, Pat's <laughs> gonna put his Lisa One mouse on it. Which he's going to tell you about shortly. It's a special oh, deal. By the way, is um, uh, David uh, Holdhouse? You, you mentioned before you had, um, you said just about every Apple. Do you have an Apple One? Ooh. I've I, I haven't got an Apple One, but I've got I've got a few pieces thereof. Um, really? I'm, I'm trying to. I mean, I've got one of the chaps I know in the states who's he's getting on, and he's. He's a good mate, and I'm. I'm. Tr he's saying, "Oh yeah, I've, nobody's interested," and I'm saying to myself, well, "You can you can throw it my way eventually." Um. So uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I'd love to get one, but they're just they're so over the top, you know. I've got to, obviously the um. I've, I've got a whole lot of interesting varieties of Apple Twos, and I've got I've got all the leases. I mean, there's a chap who was actually um starting a computer museum in Holland and he was doing it Apple themed and uh, he just got to a crisis point. So he just, he more or less dumped the stuff on me. So I had to build, I think I bought about, oh God, close to a hundred boxes of Apple stuff over. And wow. I haven't oh. been through that shit yet. Did you say you haven't been through it? I haven't been through a lot of it. It's just stacked. <laughs> wow. I wonder what's in those boxes. <laughs> I, yeah, how many Lisa mice are in those boxes 
kind of now. I've got a few, a few, and I've got you know, a few mouse holes. The software as well, but I mean, I've, 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 I've definitely got at least one Lisa one. I think I've got the se a second, and I've got a, like, you know, the, the 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 second version of Lisa. I've got at least four of those. <laughs> wow, wow. Okay, amazing. <sighs> I think you definitely need to invite us over. We'll have a bit of a look. <laughs> Not to steal, but it would be interesting to help you work through your boxes and just see what on earth you have because it sounds like it sounds overwhelming to be honest with you. Yeah, I'm a little bit overwhelmed at the moment, but I'm just I'm trying to work through it. I've just got uh, you know some big shelves put in there and I'm going to start, you know, putting things up and and yeah, as I say the only way to do it is unpack it, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Very good. Um, oh, wow. Yes. $270,000. It even comes with that signed manual. Yeah, I think it's a reproduction of that manual, but it's signed by Was. Yeah, and some other dude. Was signed everything. He, he signed, God, I've seen a, a toilet seat signed by Was. He signed, he signed everything. <laughs> Yeah, give me something that isn't signed by Steve Wozniak. Between Peter Brock and Woz, <laughs> they've signed everything in the world. <laughs> Very good. All right, cool. Anything else, Steve? Nope. All right. No, thank you. Thank you. Nigel, you're up. Um, yeah, I haven't really been doing a lot this month. Um, just uh, sorting out some of my more Amiga gear I've got here, of course. That's the usual thing for me. Um, yeah, I uh, opened up my spare Amiga 1200 and uh, noticed some leaky caps on that, so I pulled the caps off that. That's going to be sent away. And I finally talked my brother into giving me his um, 1200 to be redone too, and uh, that was really bad. It's lost five pads, and yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But, um That'll be sent away next week as well. I'll send off uh, six, uh, Amiga 600 and another CD32 as well to be recapped by David, um, David Middleton. Yeah. Um, then what else? Sorting PC gear and uh, digging out some of the other bits and pieces I've got laying around. Like um, I found this in amongst the collection. Signetics uh, single board computer. Ooh. What's the processor on that? Um, good question. I just brought up a web page about that. Uh, um, yeah, I don't see it offhand. What's there? Is yeah. there a twenty six ten or that? What's that big white chip there on that board? Does it have a number on uh, it? Uh, Signetics. It's uh, supposed to be an um, N eight T three one N. My favorite. Or something yeah chip number of uh, the, the processor uh signetics the chip number is uh 2650 uh, i yeah, i think yeah. it is yeah, yeah 2650 yeah the 2650 yeah. Cool. yeah okay yeah yep cool 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 very common yes <clears throat> so i'm not too sure what the interface for that is though it's 100 pin so is that s100 um, bus it's the s100 yeah i was bus. gonna say it's, it's just an s100 so that that's that's cool because i've been wanting to do an s100 project and I think what this would be an S100 video board kit, yep. I think. Yeah. So that, well, um, what sort of output is on that? Uh, it's, it's not built up at all. It's just. Um, I don't see anything you could plug into it. Yeah, I gather it'd be on. It looks like there's section. pins at the top. Uh, yeah, it'll be pins at the oh, top yeah. and just two leads going out. Uh, to yeah. opposite. See, see right. Um, yeah. Actually, right, I think we're in the middle of the board. There's the um, at the very top, there's those they look like they might the three, know. the three things, the two, like the yeah, up know. near that resistor on the upper left. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, 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 I reckon it'll be the very two at the top, almost in the middle. Oh, yeah, I see them. Yeah. Yep, yeah, I reckon. Okay, yeah, yeah, I, I got this from a retired engineer amongst um, that with um. Uh, Apple II Platinum as well. He's pulled off um, every single chip on that board, though. Oh, he, he, he got it as a kit and it was never built up, apparently. Oh, so, oh cool. Yeah, yeah. But I also um, have this from him as well. 
This is a what is that? More of a rare. Um, it's like a TI. Um, was it uh, ninety nine? Yeah, it's but it's, um, basically the sing single board computer version of that. Um, we'll throw an industrial computer, but um, from what I gather, you might be able to modify the ROMs and everything. And there's a guy that's got a project. He's um, put built a video card for it and a few other bits and pieces. So, yeah, been chatting to him about that. So I got to get a back back plane made for it. They made them in um, four and eight. Um, slots normally but i'm trying to get a he does a uh, i think a four slot at the moment reproduction four slot for it so yeah that's Indeed. the next project off the off the thing that'll be a long term one though because i'll build a full chassis and everything and yeah 19 inch rack mount and cool that's really yeah cool. other than that really just um oh yeah that's uh i dug this out as well for it this is the uh terminal What? The terminal? Yeah, Texas that's the argument. That's a calculator. No, no. It's a terminal. Holy moly. That that's is awesome. neat as. That is cool. Yeah, um, I've been looking around at it and... Um, I don't think you I can touch type on about, it. Yeah, there's, I've only seen about four or five people with the, with the complete set like that, so... It's very, it, the cards themselves are fairly common, but this, this terminal is absolutely, yeah. I think um, last set I saw sold for like $1,200 or something. What does Plus, the calculator terminal say? On a, it? Does, it, does it have like a model number on it? Yeah, it's a TM990 slash 301. Slash or dash? Uh, backslash. TM 990 slash 300 and one micro terminal VT 100. Holy moly. Look at that. How good is that? I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Here's a PDF document manual. Oh, well, it was there. It's gone. Yeah, that's one of my pride and joys in the collection, but um, that's going <laughs> to be a very long time project. That one. <laughs> that one's going into the pool room, I think. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, a lot rarer than an S100 um, bus. So, 1978. <clears throat> oh, wow. There's the board. This manual here is exactly what you've got. Yeah, I think I've actually downloaded that. I've got a um, folder with a lot of the documentation on it and that for it. So, huh. yeah. How Very sweet. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, very interesting indeed. I like that. That's cool. That is really cool. Great. Yeah, that'll be um, you know, be filmed hopefully and get all that up and going. I haven't even powered up that board yet. Um, yeah, I need to get the minus twelve volt onto it. So yeah, don't want to just power it from an ATX power supply because they're not regulated and all that sort of thing properly for it. So um, yeah, but I'll, I'll I'll get there with it. Cool. Very neat. Okay. okay. Yeah, that's about it this month. No worries. Pat, what have you been doing? Um, it's I, This is a particularly nasty, busy month for me, to be honest. Uh, just what, what went past with the end of FY for me. Um, I did find the museum topic pretty interesting. Um, I, I, I kind of feel like I've got <laughs> all the assets and none of the real estate to do that. Um, I... I um, I ended up watching um, one of the guys on the on the group posted this uh, MZ80K restoration video of the uh, the bite attic um, doing, and they, they had previously done a pet restoration, but then this guy's kind kind of done an MZ80K one. Now, I'll tell you what, the guys, it's quite they're quite good restoration videos. He's he's quite metic, meticulous and and everything he's doing, so I really enjoyed watching that. Um, I also have the the uh, A500 Mini sitting in a box over there. I um, I also just had a Mistress 500 turn up because I got I know I've got an A500 plus empty case and keyboard sitting around. So when I think Henry was talking about that a few months back, I, I ordered one and I've just noticed it's turned up. Um, uh, no, I haven't I haven't really done much. I I, um, I bought um, got my hands on a 
the the first compact 386 that I want to do a bit of a restoration on. Um, trying to source the the EJ monitor it came out with is a little bit trickier. I've got like a composite one, but I've not composite one. A, uh, um, it's an amber monitor, um, which is kind of like CGA, but it can and it actually can do it can emulate EGA or it, or it can just do kind of four shades of amber CGA. But I'm going to start kind of working on that a little bit. Um, been trying to work through my gear in terms of just building up a little bit of a, a, a some sort of an asset database to work out stuff that I've got, which is a very tiring process. Um, time consuming. Very time consuming, and and um, it's it's really interesting because I kind of uncovered things I forgot I even had, and then, um, <laughs> and so that's that's always fun, but. But in terms of just kind of going through item by item, it is a bit exhausting. And so, I've, you know, it don't, you can only do it for so long. I'd say I'm probably maybe at best a quarter way through. Um, uh, I got my hands on a TI-59 programmable calculator. So <laughs> vaguely looks like what you just put up, but it's actually a calculator. Um, and then the only other thing I've mentioned is uh, on, I, I'm, I, I need to be in Adelaide on Friday for a, fin, a friend's 50th. And um I noticed that the Adelaide collectors are having their their oh, gathering sweet. starting at six or six thirty. My meet my my actual event that I'm there. I'm meant to be there at seven, but I might just pop in for half an hour and and show my face and and then um, and then uh, <laughs> spend thirty minutes heading to a vineyard. So, um, but apart from that, I don't really have much to to talk about. Cool. <clears throat> you want to talk about the uh, Lisa mouse that you've ordered? <laughs> a Lisa mouse uh it's only five thousand nine hundred dollars i haven't i haven't looked at it since i sent you the link um <laughs> it could be a prototype it could be it might not yeah. be it's just, just one of the guys says could be a prototype on on ebay yeah that's why i sent anthony yeah I, yeah it's still five five nine by it now i don't see anything about it that could indicate that it might be a prototype. it's got some stickers on the front with numbers on it <laughs> Yeah, that it's... could be prototype. <laughs> I know I saw them just like I, I might it buy could it just be vandalism. For <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I'm not buying it. Sorry. Well, um, the, the second sentence he says, This seems to be a development unit mouse. Um, so uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> I am also not buying it. <laughs> But imagine the mouse ball in that. No, yeah. oh, it's probably in immaculate condition. <laughs> it's actually, it doesn't look like it is at all. Uh, <laughs> is this sticker on the front that's coming off? Or are you looking at it too, Alan? Yeah, I think we all are. Uh, yeah. uh, it's pretty bloody grubby. At least it's. Could. I know, <laughs> but it's got these numbers on the side. I mean, 26, 27, 28. It's good if you're not good at counting. Um, that might be useful for you. It's in, it is interesting. That it's got weird device numbers on it. But, I mean, that could be like from someone's asset register. And whoopee, there's a red sticker on the bottom side of it. Big deal. No, it is very grubby. You'd think that for 5,000 bucks, you might be able to give it a clean. It's got 21 watches there. Yeah, that's because everyone thinks it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, that's the other thing that we haven't talked about uh, is the Commodore 65. We sort of mentioned it in the group. Oh, but yes. the Commodore 65 sold for not quite 50,000 euros. So the guy didn't get the free monitor. <laughs> you wouldn't <laughs> think he would have bid higher, so he could have got the free monitor. Uh, but I think it... How much was it? Was it like um, Aussie? Was it fifty thousand or sixty thousand? Something. Yeah, like that. well over. Yeah, it was. I think it was just over fifty thousand US or something like that. But um, yeah, and actually, just sorry uh, on on sixty five stuff. I did hear that the uh, for those that have put an order in for the Mega sixty five, the packaging has arrived at the uh, its destination, so they are going to start packing it soon and shipping out forthwith. So. Looking forward to that. Happy days. So we can have the brother and sister next to each other. Mm. <clears throat> Very good. Anything else, Pat? Uh, I'm good. Greg? Um, I missed last month, but I can't recall whether the month before I talked about the uh, 
the video mod we stumbled across for the Vic 20. Um, I'd reached out to Dave and mentioned about how the picture was fuzzy on the Vic 20 hooked up to an LCD screen and it was sort of nature of the beast. And then um, uh, another guy sent me this link to this mod that somebody had done and I sent it to um, you know Jason Macari. Mm-hmm. And um, sent it to Jason that night, 6.30 a.m. in the morning. I'm getting Facebook messages. Do the mod, do the mod, do the mod. He'd done it, a five-minute mod of um, removing three resistors, putting a couple of capacitors and one bodge wire. And the pitch is beautiful on an LCD screen. It still works fine on a CRT and everything. So it's really cleaned up. The VIC-20 image is beautiful. For $3 worth of parts and, you know, depending how good you are at soldering. Um, but also got the Jiffy DOS mod I've done to the VIC-20 and the Commodore 64 as well. But I think the, uh, probably the um, most impressive was yesterday, my son's birthday. The weather was looking a bit ominous and we're running out of party games and uh, powered up the two Amiga 500s and the VIC-20 and ended up with him and all his mates in there playing the two Amigas with Bubble Bubble going two players each. The VIC-20 had cosmic jailbreak going you couldn't get the kids off them hmm. having a wow of a time with it and um even then my father snuck in there quietly after that finished and decided to rekindle some memories and uh yeah so it was, yeah, it was a nice little moment to have all the kit there up and going and so yeah that was nice was but, cosmic jailbreak the one you were struggling yeah to get? the cartridge i'm still after i've got one of those um Multi SD, you know, it's an SD2 IEC with memory expansion built in from Jason. I'm getting by with that one at the moment. But yeah, now if Cosmic Jailbreak comes up at the right price, I'm still going to grab it. But uh, other than that, my friend and I are probably wasting many, many, many hours. We rediscovered um, old um, The Settlers by Blue Byte from back in 93. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, we have wasted many hours. <laughs> Not, you know, we've tried a the um the two player on split screen and that but because we've got two 500s he sits on one i sit on the other and been working our way through the missions and uh i didn't realize till i watched this four hour stream from a guy in ireland who got quite drunk whilst playing settlers and uh started uh you know like uh, what the fuck's he done he's just snuck in and all this kind of thing and commenting on the quality of his beer but how involved the economics was on that game and the whole life cycle of, you know, from the chop wood right through to, you know, getting everything in its right place and all that. So yeah, look, I spent a lot of time at the moment really just playing and enjoying the hardware a lot. So mm, good. That's what it's there for. So that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, very good. Alan. Oh, um, <laughs> Oh, I haven't got very much to talk about at all. <laughs> as far as computers are concerned, uh, I haven't even fired up a microbeat in the last oh. month. I've just been busy on other things. Um, but I've been um, I've been recording a lot of um, uh, some microbeat discs. Uh, and recovered quite a bit of new software that we didn't have. Oh, cool! Slowly. Um, slowly organizing that and cleaning it up and so forth and putting that up on the, the um, in the forum every few days at the moment. So uh, that's been keeping me busy. I'm still bloody recovering from Mother's Day lunch, I tell you. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um, I think most of us had Mother's Day lunch today. Yeah, big day. Yeah, a few glasses of champagne, a few glasses of wine. And yeah, I should have had a bit of coffee, I think, instead. <laughs> oh, so, um, no, nothing much to report at all, to be quite honest, um, other than recovering uh, quite a few good discs, uh, a couple of tapes, um, uh, doing a little bit of scanning. You know, I did a... Where are we? Oh, I, I found the only box... Uh, game that I had. That's a, a very highly sought after title. I'm sure it is. It'd be worth about 50 cents, I reckon. Yeah, I think so. <clears throat> um, but lots of. Oh, that's run. cool. That's cool. What What's the date on that uh, under your finger? 89. Uh, 
85. 85. Cool. No, I like that. Awesome. Only back to front to me, but anyway. Yeah. Um, there's 85. There's. Um, or there's also. This is from the um, Sydney Sorcerer User Group. Oh, cool. Um, What's it called? Ram what? Ramifications. Ramifications. Yeah. Oh, that's quite clever. That's clever. Volume one, number three. We've cool. only got number one and number three. Oh. Um, so where number two is and what happened after that, uh, we don't know. Um, oh, there we go. Hmm, cool. Back to... 87. Oh, yeah, in March 87 was the last one. So that's been keeping me busy. People cool. have been after that sort of stuff. So I do that and uh, and I've, I've got to post them back to where I got them and, and they're getting this for free. Oh, very good. Very good. That's it. Cool. All right. So we'll go on to general chat. So um, one video that I saw on YouTube that I thought was pretty interesting, and I'm not sure if the guy is a, an amazing YouTuber, but he's doing the, 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 the channel is called Usagi Electric, and he's been doing this series of yeah. the Centurion computer that he bought, and now he's found another one. Uh, it's if you're interested in looking at a computer that you've never heard of and a guy who's trying to figure out and bring it back to life. And the guy seems to be coming across all the right people at just the right times. Uh, very interesting. I'm just going to put a link if I can get this off. Into uh, I've shared it with everyone basically that I know. Yeah. yeah. Is that with the counterfeit one? Yes. Yes. That was, that, the was, a, that was a great story. I thought that was awesome. There's been a couple of good stories, like the, uh, maybe two or three episodes ago, he met the guy who just happened to have the diagnostic board and, uh, yeah, he's come across quite a few interesting people. And well, in the last episode, I talked about how uh, Ross Perot, yeah. with his business, bought uh, the shell of um, Centurion. Centurion. Uh, a very, very interesting uh, YouTube story. I hope that he is able to uh, finish that off. I thought that was very interesting. Mm. Uh, and uh, I like yeah. the car in the background as well. Austin Healy 3000. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I, I don't know anything about cars. So, uh, Dave, you said you were going to uh, land on buying a back bit cartridge. Yeah, it's um, oh, I'm so bloody tempted. Oh, um, you're not there yet. I thought you were. Oh, look, I I was on I was on a website today, and because uh, I was also going through, um, just like Pat was, I was going through, I was cataloging. Uh, my box of spare parts or my box of chips and uh to my horror i've got over um uh where is it i've got over 70 discrete commodore chips in spare parts as in different part numbers yeah 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 uh and i'm thinking some of these machines, I actually don't have a machine to test them in because they've come in job lots. And I'm thinking, oh, hopefully her chip tester will actually have everything in there because some of them, like I've got ROMs for the uh, the 1526 printer. I mean, who's going to want a ROM for a 1526 printer um, or a DOS ROM for a 2040 uh, disk drive? Um so I was like, oh, if, if her chip tester works, that's good. Then there's a, you know, then you do the cartridge and it does the Atari and the Intellivision and all the Commodore stuff. And it's like, oh, it just makes sense. And you do it in one hit, but then there's 400 US dollars later and uh, probably $50 shipping. And uh, I'm just yeah. trying to, I'm trying to talk myself out of it, but. I think if it's I was just going to make it, sense. And I was you, I'd buy it only for the Intellivision because I've got, I mean, as you know, we have devices for every platform and yep. you only buy it for the things that like 
why do you need it for a Commodore? We've got everything we need for Commodore. Yeah, that's true. What do you need for Atari? We've got all the stuff for Atari. Yeah. But, it, but if you don't, if you can't get LTOs and you can't get TI whatevers and yeah, yeah, that's that's the thing that for me because I, I I was excited. I'm like, oh wow, another thing for the Intellivision. It was like, what am I going to do with it? What am I going to do with it? Yeah, I was sort of thinking because I've got all sorts of stuff for uh, some of the other machines. It's like, well if one does everything it sort of really brings the price of the the cartridge down a lot if you look at it over four or five machines so um yeah I'm just... I, 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 if she had a beautiful gatefold box I'd be <laughs> you'd it. be in there like a shot uh, it would be straight <laughs> on the shelf uh but no it was um yeah uh i'm Look, I'll probably end up pulling the trigger this week. Let's put it like that. I'm just trying to talk myself out of it because she says they're not going to be ready until June, maybe, because of the chip shortage. Yeah, and look, just, who I, knows? I would love to see if the Super Super Mario Brothers ROM works when you're on television with that cart. Mm. Um, I don't know if any of the LTO special features. Um, I'm, ho- I'm hoping the answer is no. I'm hoping that it works just fine. Yep. Yeah, look, I, given the extra features in the LTO, probably not. I think it's literally just it's just hosting ROM files and that's about it, I'm guessing. But without playing with it, it's a bit hard to tell. Yeah. That's the other thing about the Super Mario ROM, I should point out, that we know that in television ROMs can be, on the original ones, were up to 12K, I think. Right. The Super Mario ROM is, I think, 60 or 80K. <laughs> <laughs> so it would have been one of the biggest uh, cartridges that uh, the uh, Intellivision would have had. Cool. Just trying to think how many uh, EEPROMs you'd have to put in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'd be interesting. Cool. Has anyone else been looking at any YouTube videos or been thinking about buying anything? No. I, there is, um, if you're into, um, there's a channel with, which, with a guy who is, really, really good at uh, micro soldering. And uh, I've actually learned a lot um, just from watching his stuff. It's, it's called um, Northridge Fix. And uh, it's a guy in a shop in LA and he just repairs um, Wii's and, and uh, Playstations and Xboxes and all micro soldering and um, the techniques, it's, it's good stuff. So if you're into that, not that um, the stuff we work on is exactly that level of micro, but um, it's been helpful to me, at least. I haven't got that keyboard connector up, but <laughs> aside from that, it's been helpful. I'll put, I'll put a link if you like. I'm really scared about that really fine soldering. Yeah. I'm, I just lift the pads every single time. Yeah. So this this um, this gave me a lot of, um, you know, tips and tricks on on that side, you know, um, heat and, and, and how to use flux and how to... Um, what tools and to use in different circumstances. Yeah. So does there, does he actually give, does he do that in every video or does he have like one video that says these are the yeah. techniques you should use? Pretty much uh, every video he's just repairing something, whether it's a laptop or, a, or a PlayStation or an Xbox. Um, but, um, but just he's very, very good at that sort of micro soldering. And um, that's what I managed to learn a lot uh, from him about. Cool. Very good. Well, <laughs> if there's nothing else to talk about, you guys do that. We could just end this here. Nothing I don't else. suppose Ian's provided any updates around because he was saying maybe this month. Any, yeah, yeah, so the different. date was today. <clears throat> okay. And he cancelled it because it was Mother's Day. Okay. Yep. Yep. Makes sense. Yeah. So, um, I was torn because uh, when I was told that it was today, I didn't even consider Mother's Day. And then I found out it was Mother's Day and I was like, uh, this possibly isn't going to work. Yeah. But uh, hopefully he starts again in uh, June, um, but hopefully not July because uh, I can't even host my thing in July unless we push it out to the very end of the month. Um, but I don't think anyone will mind if uh, we miss one month. But uh, yeah, anyway. There was one time where I we stopped doing this for several months, so uh, I'm sure we'll be fine. <laughs> there won't be a crisis. I was going to say uh, we lost a lot of last year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, very good. 
So any plans, any plans to do anything in the next month other than I'm doing them. I'm going to finish my minstrel in the next couple of days, uh, which is that ZX80 uh, kit that I'm working on. So I'm pretty excited about that. Anything you guys are working on that you hope to report on next time we speak? Um, I hope to finish off my Dick Smith Super 8. Uh, sorry, yeah, Super 80. Um, is I'll it? Just, I is keep it talking about it, <laughs> but I've, uh, I've got to finish it off. Oh, that'll be cool. You and then actually power it up and see what happens, <laughs> whether it lets smoke out or, or what. <laughs> <laughs> Did I tell yeah. you about the first time I fired up that XD Sorcerer that I bought from that auction? It caught on fire. <laughs> that, I, don't know. <laughs> I, I plugged it in. I'm like, and luckily, because uh, I, I don't know if anyone's played with XD Sorcerers, but they've got these terrible, I don't even know what you would say that material is. It's not, it is plastic, but it's just this crappy. Yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about, Pat? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, anyway, it's got this crappy stuff. Anyway, I had undone the keyboard and so I, I could flip the top off. I could smell one of the uh tantalum capacitors just went Woof, and yep. uh, it was on fire, so that was uh, pretty frightening. So, yeah, don't, don't, well, be, uh, don't, don't be uh shocked if uh, one of those caps go. But a few of the micro bees I got from you there a while back, uh, first powering those up, god, I could. They were creating a tune, I reckon, as the bloody tantalums all blew up one after the other after the other. Um, yeah. The grandkids, oh, this is fun, right? Yeah. When's the next one? And you plug the next one in, poof, that one goes up. Some will crack, some burst into flames, some just go, uh, it was a great range. <laughs> yeah. But the, the good thing about tantalums is um, you know when they go. Because oh, yes. either A, yeah, they, they, you turn it on and then the power goes out. <laughs> <laughs> or you turn it on and uh, fun fun in shoes. To, the, yeah. the, the problem is uh, the tantalums that are under the keyboard. <laughs> oh, they're a pain, aren't they? They are. A, particularly the one, the one on the right-hand side is easy enough, but the one on the left-hand side, you've got to take some bloody keys out that physically get to it. Mm -hmm. Pain in the ass. And oh, guess what? Will. Majority of them were on the bloody left hand side. <laughs> yeah, I always love it when they explode on the bottom of the hard drives. And then you're oh. like, oh, we've got a fire right in the middle of my computer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. So your project is Super 80. You've yep. got something up there. What did you have, uh, Dave? Oh, this is a, a ZX80 slash 81 clone. So, um... oh, so that's not one of. Um... No, that's that's not the minstrel. This one is one that uh, oh, I started this ages ago. But the uh, given the shortage of components, the the crystal finally came in a couple of weeks ago. So uh, hopefully it will work. Who knows? That's the next thing I've got to do is I've got to order a case. I wonder if I can get a case for the minstrel, but I don't know if you can. Oh, you can get um, if it's if it's so. Does it actually have the keyboard on the PCB like this one? Yeah. So you can use uh, if you've got access to a three D printer, you can actually three D print a ZX eighty case. Yeah, I've been staying clear because I if there's one thing I don't need, it's another hobby, another thing, another thing to do. So I'm hoping that I could just buy it and be done with it because it's just another rabbit hole and then just get, you just go down this other rabbit hole and it's like, Oh, I don't trust me. More. I know I have four 3d printers in the house. So <laughs> yeah, I'm not interested in even starting because I have a fear of that. Uh, cool. Speaking of cases, well, I think of it, did um, anyone see the uh, crystal cases for the Amiga 500s? They uh, look awesome. The what? It's a see-through case for the Amiga 500. Oh, ah, who's doing that? Uh, was it a1200.net or something yeah, like that? Yeah, it's a1200.net again. Same guys who did the Amiga 1200 cases. Yeah, they, first, this is the only run of crystal cases they're going to do because the mold will be textured now for the um, for the main cases. So, uh, but apparently... I thought the mouse looked awesome Ooh. too, a clear mouse. Oh, there they are. Look at that. Oh, a new Amiga mechanical keyboard. Cool. There's a guy on our uh, MicroV forum. Um, he's actually designed a MicroV case 
and he'll be making it out of Perspex and he's laser cutting it. Oh, nice. So it's all number of pieces will all stick together and join up. So I've got to put the hard word on him for that one for me. <laughs> It'll be good for uh, the shows that we go to. To uh, That's the only bloody use, I reckon, for a clear case is to show what's inside it without actually taking the lid off. Yeah, or, uh, or, when, or when Ewan releases the, the, the new version of the Micro B. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, well, he'll also release... Uh, the cases later on when he gets the keyboard for them done. Yeah. Because, yeah, they'll fit in the, uh, uh, the 256TC case, which he's got a stack of. Right. Uh, but he's got no keyboards, but he's designed uh, a keyboard. Right. Uh, so until he gets those made, um, yeah. But I'm short of cases anyhow. I've got more micro-B uh, innards than I've got cases, so um, any case will be good. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So, so, there, so Alan, is that meant to, so the cases are obviously for the original boards and stuff, because I've, I've, got, I've yes. got some cases that are absolutely trashed, so that would be interesting. Oh. Yeah, um, well, he's got a... Um, a 128k micro B uh, without a case, um, which he got going um, eventually, um, and that's the purpose of basically doing this whole project. Mm. Uh, we've got the line work design work for the cases, the original cases, so he's used that for all the dimensions and angles and all that sort of stuff. Um, I'll see if I can find a picture to put up. To show you where he's up to at this stage. So, carry Did he just mute himself? Yep. Okay. Was that deliberate? Sorry, I said you, you guys carry on while I find it. Oh, I'll right. Up. Okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> I've just muted. <laughs> yep, he's just done it again. Good, cool. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, okay. So, Pat, do you have any plans to get back into it? Uh, I, I'm sort of, um, I'm finishing up kind of where I've been working for the last 18 years and going to a new job. And oh. so, um, so I got a bit on at the moment. So I might, <laughs> but I got, I got a lot of things I got to do at the moment. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, fair enough. Um, we will see. How long did you say you've been working there? Did you say 17 years? 18. 18. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, I've been with my employer 21. So okay. I, I know the pain, but I've still got nowhere to go. <laughs> when I say nowhere to go, I'm just stubborn. It's easier to make no decision than it is to make a decision, if you know what I mean. Yeah. 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 I've been where I am for 19 years. So. Sometimes the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. Yeah, especially in this time of uncertainty. Um, mm. I think we're entering a very challenging time period. Yes. And I don't think many people actually realize it yet. No, I'm a bit worried about where the world's going. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's why I'm moving on all my excess bits and pieces at the moment. While there's still some demand for them, because I think it's going to get a bit tighter yet. You know, mm. all of this, uh, yeah, we'll see. Uh, yeah well maybe maybe learning at learning fund one and two will go down in value <laughs> <laughs> that game that nobody wants to play that we need to complete our 125 hey uh did i tell you pat while we're waiting for alan that when i got that lot there was some unusual stuff in there i got do you know the that homebrew game copter command here yeah. is a copter okay okay right doodad thing Okay, okay. I got pencils that say in television. Okay. I got a badge that says in television brotherhood. Yeah, yeah, that's the that's the guys on the on that forum, right? The... Yeah, but uh yeah, so so this guy obviously was a big collector. But yep. uh yeah. um I I found the case this is one of his early 
Um, oh, you've disabled screen, sh screen sharing. Okay. Oh, hang on one moment, please. You're free to go. Okay. Um, <laughs> I presume everyone can see that because I can't. I can see no, it. Like, is that a is that cardboard? Yes, he's just made the first one out of cardboard, but this is basically sort of the way that he's making it, and then he's just glued it together to get the right shape and all that sort of stuff. So if you can imagine that in uh, in clear, uh, but that's the basic sort of design. Uh, it's going to make a perspex, like a perspex. Yeah, yeah, out of perspex though, and he's got a he's got a laser cutter, so he can do it all himself. Um. And that will just fit a standard microbeam, because um, basically they all, they're all the same inside, except for the very early ones are a little bit different. So he's laser cut that cardboard by the looks of it. Either that, or he's very good with a Stanley knife. No, yeah, he's laser cut it. He's laser cut, and it's uh, it's um, M MDF, a very thin MDF, huh. not cardboard. I gotta yeah, say that's awesome. That's actually not bad. I gotta say, even even as MDF, that's not a bad little case if you were desperate. You know what I mean? That's that's pretty neat. I, I would if if he does a run, or we, but I know he'll probably be producing them individually. But um, with the clear product, I would I would be somewhat interested in that because the I've got a I've got one I've got one that's got like cigarette burns and all sorts of shit in it. Um, so. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I think uh, yeah. He, he's uh, he's been made. He's made a few different mods and changes and so forth but um yeah I'm, he's uh he's keen to get there shortly and um yeah i'll be been helping him somewhat so i'll be putting the hard word to uh while you're running them off you run another <laughs> because a few people seem to have uh, shown a bit of interest um yeah. I yeah, think you'd do some in um, like some smoky uh, perspex as well. You know, yeah, he's actually do... going. He's different... actually going to do the the uh, keyboard area in smoky perspex because the microbe has uh, that yeah. part is grey. Yeah. Um, so he's doing, yeah, the, uh, the the bit that goes around the keyboard and the little bit at the back behind the keyboard. So yeah, they're, they're going smoky and the rest is going clear. Oh, that's really cool. <laughs> So yeah, no, he's doing a fantastic job. Um, uh, yeah, that's one of his early posts. There's some other photos I haven't found yet, but anyhow, that will do to give you a bit of a uh, an idea of what's coming. Cool. Very good. Well, if no, anybody's got nothing else to say, I will just point out that the next meeting is planned for the second Sunday of the month, which will be the 11th. No. That's a Saturday, the 12th of June. It's the 12th of June. So uh, I look forward to hearing about Stephen's keyboard disconnection, uh, the System 80, no, the Dick Smith um, Super 80. Super 80. In operation. Super, yeah. uh, the um, ZX80 clone completion and the Minstrel 2's successful repair and Pat's excellent adventures with his lisa one mouse <laughs> <laughs> yeah well my project for the end of the month is to clear out some crts i've got a um, friend of mine he's got a, another tech friend that's getting out of a lot of gear and uh, he's got 60 crts he wants Ooh. to offload oh yeah they're hard to post but, um, yeah, what's... well, I've, I've I've sent quite a few around actually. I've I've got a bit of a technique to packing them, and so yeah, I haven't had any damage myself yet. But it's uh, as long as I don't drop them from a decent height. But I try to put a decent padding on the bottom and the sides. So, Nigel, any yeah. any particular models or makes? Um, yeah, well, I do have the Amiga branded. Um, what is it? The um... ten eighty four. Yeah, yeah, 1084. I've got two of them, so I'll move one of them on. I think one of them needs a replacement flyback. It's, it's still working okay, but it's got a bit of a whine to it. And um, oh, I've got a few a few Commodore monitors there. I've got, you know, doubles of a few models there that I've got to go through and sort out what I'm going to move on. 
if I you assume uh, there's no micro B monitors, particularly a 7030. <laughs> oh, no, I've got the one for myself, but yeah, <laughs> no, I've only got the one micro B monitor. If I you, do have a um, TRS 80 monitor, the CM01, I think it is. I think it's a 01, it might be a 02, but I think it's a 01. That's a nice, that's got the black bordering on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's the it. original. That's a nice one. That's a nice monitor. Yeah, yeah. I haven't uh, got that up and running at the moment, but uh, that's one that's that's a keeper. Cool. Any any seventeen oh ones? I've got a seventeen oh one and a seventeen oh two. I think I've only got the one seventeen oh one though, and then I've got the one nine oh two. I think it is as well. The yeah. Yeah, yeah, I've got one of them, and um, yeah, I've got a few of the Commodore models. I just got to dig them out and see what I've got doubles of. And seventeen oh ones, though, you can find on the side of the road. Yeah, yeah, is. apparently they just <laughs> pop out of the ground or something. Yeah, like you just walk by people's houses and they just abandon them on the side of the road. What a! I couldn't believe it. I really did a double take. I'm like, I even what? even had the front cover on it still intact, didn't it? No, it didn't. No, it didn't. Oh, it didn't. When I ran past it, I could swear. I'm like, the door's still on it. And uh, then I, I went back and because I literally I was running down the road, I saw it. And I'm like, I got to get back, get my car, and come back and get this monitor. So someone else, time, actually, someone the, else walked past and they've gone, Oh, I need a front cover for my 1701. <laughs> oh, maybe, maybe that's what happened. But by the time I got back, dusk had come and you couldn't see. So I just went, Snap. And uh, it was gone, and of course the monitor does work, which was great. Yeah, I think I've only got one. Um, one of the Commodore models is missing a flap. To be honest, hey, I've got I think I've got um, what four? Um, what is it? Eighteen oh four dash P's as well. Yeah, ten eighty four. So yeah, ten eighty four dash P's. Yeah, so I've got to go through. I think I've got two of them that aren't working, and yeah, so might put a couple of them up for sale cheap move them on aren't the 1701 such an iconic monitor yeah they're gorgeous looking they're just perfect for a bread bin yeah look perfect. i've got an 1802 which works great with my 64g but a 1701 that would just round everything out yeah yeah i've got i've got i've got two now i've got the one with the door and one the one the roadside abandoned one but I, one thing that does bother me is what if it did have a door or what if it's lying on the ground yeah, you probably and it was, it off. And it's been thrown like when I grabbed it, it fell yeah. off. Or that's the one thing I but that's weeks and weeks ago. It's long gone. Would have been mowed over by now. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Very good. Well, if there's nothing else, we might just wrap it up here and have a nice early one. So uh thank you everybody for dialing in tonight. And uh yeah, we hope to see you on whatever that date was. I think I said it was the June the twelfth. The twelfth of June. Very good. Looking forward to hearing about all the stuff you've been doing, and uh, we'll see you then. No worries. Thanks, Thanks you later. Bye.